Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see you all, my virtual family, Empowerment Temple. What a joy it is to be back home at my home church, Empowerment Temple. We want to thank and praise God for your beloved pastors, Pastor uh, and Lady Barnes. We are certainly humbled uh, at this opportunity to just stand here and minister uh, to you. It's been so long, Empowerment Temple. Good to be back with you. To all of my brothers and sisters who are sharing this platform with me, I salute you and I honor you. Uh, without belaboring the hour, let's jump right into the word. I've been given the assignment of the second word of our Lord Jesus from the cross that can be found in Luke's gospel, chapter number 23, verse 39 through 43. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, but whatever version you have to read along with us, you can definitely do so. Verse 39 reads like this. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself um, and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed are suffering justly for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong and he was saying jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and he being jesus said to him truly i say to you today you shall be with me in paradise. Would you just look at somebody close to you and say, that's just Jesus being Jesus. The ministry of Jesus is about touch. It's about connection. That that's why we must understand the spirit behind the social distancing. Because it is in nature antithetical to Christ because it removes the power of touch. It removes the power of connection and forces us into a state of isolation. And it's in isolation that the enemy comes with the influence of deception. And when he gets you isolated, he deceives you into disobedience. Ask Eve how she was deceived into eating the fruit he was able to, to deposit his deception when she was in a place where she was uncovered. And when you are alone and uncovered, he deceives you into disobedience. And then he causes you to use your influence to bring company to your misery, which in turns creates a culture of disobedience. Adam, take a bite too. Don't let me eat by myself. But the Bible says that if any man is in Christ, any man and no woman is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. And we got to understand that an encounter with our Christ creates immediate newness, dismantling the notion or the ideal that everything comes tomorrow or that there is a wait and see approach to everything that's good everything good you desire will come tomorrow it's all happening in the future it says that nothing good can happen for you today that's the modern day ideal but God gives this criminal this repentant criminal security who is willing this criminal to take responsibility for his actions that life God is showing him that regardless to your actions life can start today because in order to fully comprehend Jesus's words you must understand them in the context of what this criminal says first he's hanging Jesus is between two thieves but while one is being disrespectful to Jesus, the other is being defensive of Jesus. This man, he says, has done nothing wrong. 
While one is being arrogant towards Jesus, the other is being accountable to Jesus. We deserve this punishment. And after Jesus was able to gather himself through a conversation with his father concerning forgiving those who were actually committing this brutal, brutal, brutal act, Jesus now speaks and has a conversation with the criminal because Jesus now can free the criminal because Jesus has been free through forgiveness. And you can't help free somebody until you've been freed from the bondage of being unforgiving. Jesus says here he speaks to this criminal and Jesus teaches us a lesson that we shouldn't be surprised that Jesus is now having a conversation with this particular criminal. It, he, he shows us he's now having a conversation with the crook. But it's not, however, surprising because Jesus was always berated by the religious because of his call to the sinner, his call to the rejected. His call to the dejected, his call to, as Howard Thurman says, uh, puts it, the disenfranchised and his call to those whom the religious sect deemed unworthy. Jesus ate with sinners. Jesus drank with sinners. Jesus let a woman of the street wash his feet. He ministered to a woman at the well who had five husbands. Jesus, he litigated on behalf of a woman caught in adultery. So it shouldn't surprise any of us that one of his last breathing conversations was to a man who deserved death but received life who deserved hell but got paradise and isn't that a shout worthy thought for all of us we who were guilty of probably everything under the sun we who were guilty of neglecting our savior we who were guilty of living in our own fleshy passion we who made mistake after mistake which in reality now is no longer a mistake but has transitioned into an intentional act just like criminals but we showered it under the cloud and caveat of grace we who should have been on that cross but but he was there taking the punishment for our irresponsibility there should never be a day that we shouldn't shout not because we got cars, clothes, and money. Not because we got houses and land. But there should never be a day that we shouldn't shout simply because I've been forgiven. I don't know where you are watching me at right now. But somebody ought to lift their hands and just shout that I've been forgiven. Yes, I was guilty, but I've been forgiven. Yes, I was wretched, but I've been forgiven. Yes, I was low down, but I've been been forgiven yeah here's what I love about Jesus he provides come here now he provides a spiritual peace in the presence of physical and humanistic discomfort both are in pain both are in the middle of a body tormenting crucifixion both are in their hands but one is sorry the other is a savior and the savior has the ability to comfort the spirit and psyche of the sorry even while he only has five statements left and Jesus teaches us that when you have been anointed to bring healing, you will disregard your own pain to bring somebody else peace. And some of you listening to me now, you can't understand for the life of you. You ask yourself the question, how are you able to encourage others when you can't even encourage yourself? How can you push others when you can't even push yourself? How can you pray for others when you can't even pray for yourself? And the answer to the question is you, yeah, somebody shout me, have been given the grace to empower, encourage, and engage others who have no power 
to empower, encourage, and engage themselves. That's why when there's a problem, everyone comes to you. When they need advice, they come to you. There is a grace on your life to help heal those who you encounter that are broken. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost, while in agony. Jesus, while in pain. Jesus, while bruised. Jesus, while bleeding. Jesus, Lord, while wearing a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus, with nails in his feet. Jesus, help me, somebody. He doesn't get a sabbat. Jesus. He doesn't get a day off even while dying, talk Matthews. He doesn't even get to stay home to be quarantined at, the, at, at his house and forced to stay home. He has to finish being Jesus, man. And that means forgiving those who hurt him, who broke him, and saving those who need him. He also teaches us that because there is pain, that doesn't mean there is a precedent for relaxing your duties. Just because there is inconvenience doesn't mean you get a day off. And Jesus surprises him, I'm certain, with his response. He, the criminal, his prayer, his request was a certain one that indicated future. Tomorrow, a tomorrow ideal. Jesus when you come into your kingdom, come on now. please remember me. But he didn't know that the Jesus he was talking to, they were being crucified in his kingdom. They were already in his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. And he says, Jesus, and, and watch this, there was no weight in Jesus' response. There was no wait until tomorrow. There was no someday, hey man, I got you. There was no after we die, I'm going to wake you up in paradise. Jesus said today. today. I don't know who I'm talking to and I don't know where you are, but I can, I can tell you this, that whenever you wake up, it's going to be the day. And today, something good is going to happen to you. Would you high five yourself and say, self, today, something good is going to happen to me. This communication and conversation reminds me of the encounter he had with Mary and Martha concerning Lazarus. When they said, hey, Jesus, I know our brother will rise again at the resurrection in the last day. And Jesus replied, you don't even know who you're talking to. I am the resurrection. So so whatever you need resurrected, the resurrector is here. Would you have five yourself and say, self, whatever I need, Jesus has everything I need. In other words, Jesus says, it's happening now. Hey, 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 man. I know you said when I come into my kingdom, but I am in my kingdom. So your paradise starts today. There's no wait. There's no delay. There's no hold. It's happening now. Will somebody yell at me through the screen and say it's happening now? And I'll close, I'll close with what Will Willimon said about paradise in this particular context of scripture. He says, um, how odd is it of Jesus to link paradise with pain, paradise with horror, paradise with turmoil, paradise with agony? He says, but when you understand the definition of paradise, You'll get this concept. He says paradise is whenever and wherever I am with Jesus. Goodbye, Empowerment Temple. May the Lord bless you real good. Keep being the most powerful place on the planet. But I'm here to let you know, if you have him, you have paradise. I don't care if you got no money in your pocket. I don't care if you got sickness in your body. I don't care what's going on in this pandemic. You can have, if you got Jesus, you can have paradise in a pandemic. You can have Christ and comfort in a crisis. You can have your savior in a situation that causes you to turn your head. We know things are uncertain now, but touch your neighbor if you got somebody in the house if you don't touch yourself and say as long as I got Jesus I have paradise with me as long as I have Jesus I have today you'll be with me today in paradise may the Lord bless you and heaven smile upon you amen